What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of the new PS4 Jailbreak tutorial series. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos, check them out. There's a playlist link down in the video description. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use app to USB to store your PS4 apps on a USB drive or external hard drive. Now you may be wondering, well, you know, you can do this anyway in the PS4. The PS4 allows you to go to your devices, you can go to, you know, USB storage devices, select a USB drive or external hard drive, and you can format as extended storage. And this will work on a jailbroken PS4 just fine. You can say, you know, yes, we want to use this as extended storage. Obviously, it deletes all the stuff that's currently on the drive. And then from there, you can, you know, just go to your storage. You can go to system storage, applications, select an application like, I don't know, payload guest, for example. So move to extended storage, payload guest, maybe, you know, PS4 Explorer or some other apps or whatever. I can move those over to the extended storage. And now those homebrew apps or games or whatever you want to copy over are now on my external drive. And then from there, they should still work for the most part. I think there might be some homebrew apps that don't like running in this way from an external drive like this. But as you can see, Payload Guest ran there no problem. PS4 Explorer, which is also on the USB drive now. Uh, okay, so this one seems to wait. Cannot load following save data. Okay, that's fine. Let's see if that if it fixes it. Yeah, okay, so it still runs. Just some issue with the save data there. Uh, from running from the USB, but it still works. So for the most part, homebrew apps and games, especially games that you copy over that way, should work absolutely fine. Okay, so I've moved the apps back over to my internal drive now. So the question is, what is wrong with this method? Why not just use this if you want to have your apps, more PS4 apps, uh, stored on a USB drive instead? Well, the issue with this, the primary issue is that once you extend the USB drive as system storage for the PS4, you cannot use that USB drive for anything else. It is solely for the purpose of storing your PS4 apps and nothing else. You cannot, you know, put package files on it to install package files via the USB. Uh, you cannot, you know, just plug the USB drive into your computer and use it as normal, you know, USB storage for your computer. Your computer will not recognize the drive uh, when it's formatted for the PS4. So that's the issue with using this method. So what I'm going to do is head back to my devices here and we will stop using it as extended storage so that it's back to normal. Now, what we can do instead is use a payload called app to usb If we go to our internet browser, go to your exploit host, whichever one you're using, again, caro218.ir or lethal's host or, you know, chameleon's host or whatever host you want to use. So yeah, when you first go on the exploit page, obviously it'll, it'll try and jailbreak the PS4. It'll ask you to enter the USB drive with a hacked image on it. Once you've done that, of course, you then run the gold hen payload to jailbreak the PS4. I've obviously already got it running. So what we also have in here is a payload called app to USB. And this is what we're going to use to copy our apps to the USB drive. Now you don't want to just run it initially because what we want to do is you know, add a configuration file to kind of tell the system how we want to use it. And before we do that as well, we also want to run the Orbis Toolbox payload. So I'm going to run the Orbis Toolbox payload first, and this will become clear as to why I'm doing this in just a bit. So, so once that's loaded, we can then exit out of here, go to our settings menu, and we'll now have an Orbis Toolbox option here in the settings. We're going to go in there and we're going to go to Orbis Toolbox settings. And what we want to do is show title ID labels. So we'll tick that box and then head back out. And you can see that all the apps now have a title ID showing up in the top left hand corner. This is going to become very useful in just a minute. So what we're going to do is switch on over to our computer. And if we go to that USB drive right here, make sure that it is formatted in XFAT format. So right click on it and go to properties. Make sure the file system is XFAT. Obviously, if it isn't, then right click and reformat the drive, making sure you've backed up any data on it beforehand and then selecting XFAT as the file system and clicking start to reformat the drive. So once you have it in XFAT format, we're going to go into the drive and create a new folder called PS4 in uppercase characters. And then in here, we're going to want to put the configuration file for app to USB. So we can get that configuration file from this GitHub page posted by Al Azov the PS4 app to USB. So we're just going to click on the code 
and download it as a zip file. Once you have it downloaded, we can then open up that zip file, go to PS4 app to USB, and we have the app to USB.ini file right here. This is the configuration file. So we're going to copy that to the PS4 folder on the USB drive. And now we can open it up and configure the settings. So you've got a few different settings in here that we don't have to worry too much about. We've got the mount point, which is like which USB is it going to be mounted on, USB 0 or USB 1. So you can change this to USB 0. So 0 for USB 0, 1 for USB 1. Um, so obviously, if you have like two USB drives plugged in at the same time, you'll have to specify the mount point of which USB drive you actually want to copy the package files to and load the package files from. So that's why that's there. I would recommend just not having any other USB drives plugged into uh, the PS4 or just make sure you plug in your USB drive to the same port every single time. And then you don't really have to mess around with the mount point. So I'm just going to leave it on zero. So then you have the check USB option, which is mainly just if you already have package files on the USB drive and now you're wanting to copy more package files from the you know hard drive to the USB, then you can do the check USB method, uncomment out this line, and then it will kind of ignore the ones that are already on uh, your USB drive. And it will just copy the ones that are not already on your USB drive to save you some time. So then you have the rename app option, which is for like older versions of the payload, uh, which named the apps differently. So you don't really have to worry about that option. The only options you really need to worry about mainly if you're doing this for the first time are these options right here. So you've got disable metadata, ignore updates and move DLC. So by default, when you run the payload, it will copy all of the apps from the hard drive to the USB drive, including any DLC any updates and any metadata for the apps as well for the for your PS4 apps. So it'll copy all of that over to the USB drive. So if you don't want it to copy the updates, then you uncomment out the ignore updates line and then it will not copy the updates. Same thing with the DLC, same thing with the metadata, which is like icons and stuff. So if you don't want it to copy any of that stuff, then you can uncomment out these lines and it will not copy that data over. So that's how that works. Now, the most important one, though, is this mode move section. So the way that this is set up right now is that it will copy everything from the hard drive to the USB apart from any title IDs that you put in this list. So any title IDs of any apps that you put in this list, it will ignore those and keep those on the hard drive and everything else will be copied to your USB drive. So for example, if I don't want, say, Black Ops 3 and Resident Evil 3 copied to the USB drive. I want them kept on the internal hard drive. Then I just need to note down the title IDs of these apps. So CUSA 14123 and CUSA 02624. So I can just go ahead and add those into this list. So 14123 and 02624. And then get rid of this. So if I set it up like this and save it, then that's what will happen. It will copy every app on my PS4 to the USB drive and it will ignore just those two games and they will stay on the internal hard drive. So if you're wanting to copy the majority of your apps from the hard drive to the USB, this is how you should set it up. However, if you're only wanting to copy a few apps to the USB drive and keep the majority of your apps on the hard drive, so the opposite, then what you want to do is uncomment out this line and then that will do the complete opposite so instead of copying all of the apps from the hard drive to the usb and ignoring the ones you put in this list it will do the opposite where it will keep all of the apps on the hard drive apart from the ones that you put into this list so now because i've uncommented out this line these are the only two apps that will be copied to the usb drive so black ops 3 and resident evil 3 will be copied to the usb and everything else will be ignored so that is the big difference between this mode move section. If you comment this out, everything's going to be copied to the USB apart from the things in this list. If you uncomment it, then everything will be kept on the hard drive apart from the ones that you put in this list. Those will be the only ones copied to the USB. That's how I'm going to set this up because I don't want to copy most of my apps to the USB, just one or two. So we'll leave it like this. So we'll go ahead and save it. 
and we should be good. So all we have to do now is unplug that USB drive and plug it back into the PS4. Okay, and once we're on the PS4, we're just going to run the payload app to USB. Make sure you don't have any other USB drives plugged into the PS4 while you're doing this. Otherwise, it might accidentally select the wrong drive to, uh, to copy the files to. So we're going to run app to USB. You get a couple of warnings when you first do this just to you know, let you know that you can unplug the USB drive to cancel it before it starts uh, in case you made a mistake and you just realized last minute. But hopefully you should be good. And we're now moving the apps to the USB. This may take a while. So as you can see, it starts doing our first app that we have in the list, which is Resident Evil 3 Remake. So because this game is about 20 gigabytes, it's going to take a little while. Then it's going to start doing the Black Ops 3 uh, game which is also quite large so this will take probably I don't know maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes to do these two games for me so once it finishes with those games it then does the updates and once it's done all the updates it will then do all the metadata as well and then once it's done it should say that it is complete so that's it we should have everything now working so if we head down to our games those two games are now on the USB drive so if I unplug the USB drive and try and run one of them you can see we instantly get this message, cannot start the application, the data is corrupted, delete the application from the PS4 and then download it again from the library. Same thing with Resident Evil 3 because they are now stored on the USB drive. If I connect that USB drive back up to the computer and we'll have a look to see what it looks like now on the computer. So plugging that back into the computer, you can see that we have our PS4 folder and in here we've got all of the different folders for all the different title IDs and obviously it didn't copy any of these because I specified in the settings file not to copy them so most of them are empty apart from the two games that we did so 14123 which is Resident Evil 3 you can see we have the package file right here and you know we've got the icons this is all the metadata here the stuff like the key map stuff and all these icons an 89 file all of that is the metadata that we told it to copy so you can specify not to copy that if you just want it to copy the package and i don't really have any uh, game updates installed so if i did then it would have copied the update package file here as well but yeah that's basically it that works absolutely fine so if we take that out and put it back into the ps4 and if i try and run the game here you can see as soon as i plugged it back in it now runs so this is now running off my external drive and there we go, it's now running. So you can unplug it. You can see it's definitely on the USB drive there. It's not on the hard drive. However, if I go into, you know, system storage in the settings, it will still appear as though the game is on the system storage right here, as you can see Resident Evil 3 on system storage. Because what this is actually doing is it's basically moving the package file to the USB drive, obviously. So instead of there actually being a package file in that location on the hard drive where it's supposed to be, there is instead a symbolic link in there that is linking to the package file's actual location on the USB drive. So according to the console, it still thinks the package file is there uh, on the hard drive when it's actually on the USB. So obviously this gives you a bunch of different benefits easy access to the package file if you want to reinstall it or or modify it in some way. It also gives you the option to be able to install package files and still use your USB or external hard drive for anything else that you want to do. It's still accessible on the computer as you could see and you can you know put package files on the root of the USB and install them with the package installer that will still work but now you can also have your package files that are installed installed to the USB drive instead of the internal hard drive to free up some space. Even though it still shows up as though it's installed to the internal drive, it is actually located on the USB. So yeah, that's basically one way of storing your games and your PS4 apps on a USB drive while still being able to access that USB drive and use it for other things, rather than you going with the extended storage method of being forced to only use it to store your apps on and not being able to use the drive for anything else. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.